<laughs> so hi guys and uh, thank you for coming to join and follow us on this sharing good practices for organizing teaching during the COVID-19 crisis presentation. My name is Kati Clemens and I'm here joined by Sana Mehtela. And we are both from University of uh, Jyväskylä, Finland, which is obviously a higher education institute. And I'm, and we are also here on behalf of uh, LearnTech Accelerator project, which is a Horizon 2020 project um, that is gathering learning technology buyers together. And we are looking this also from the perspective of Europe as well as um, Finland perspective. LearnTech Accelerator is a project that also provides uh, free materials which you can access via learntechaccelerator.eu portal um, and it's also free for Azerbaijani universities. So go and check that out. Yeah, so a little bit about the background. So schools and teachers were struggling in Italy because of the outbreak because it forced teachers to move online very rapidly in one day. And teachers had varying skill levels in arranging online education. Also, for example, in Finland, the government closed schools on 18th of March and they're estimated to stay closed until 13th of May. And well, in Finland, the infrastructure is on a good level and the Schools could give out iPads and laptop, laptops to students and works here are mostly high, high speed. But however, like in Italy, the ship has been very rapid, rapid and the teachers have varying skill levels. So because of this, we decided to create the group called Organizing Teaching during the COVID-19 crisis. And it is a channel for sharing experiences of how to arrange teaching. And we also do research on how the changes have affected education practices. And the members of the group are above all teachers and tech company personnel. And we have right now around 500 members. And we have discussed topics like how, how the corona crisis has affected daily teaching practices and what are good tools to be used with students. But of course, there has been a lot of challenges while organizing the teaching. While asking from the group, it was clear that there are some challenges that the normal distance learning um, situation has not thought of. So in the COVID-19 crisis, of course, the disturbance by the presence of family members uh, at, at the homes of the teachers have, have been a big big problem. There has been some network uh, speed problems. Sometimes um, there has only been uh, the 4G network with a limited amount of uh, gigas uh, present, no Wi-Fi and so on. So, so there is um, uh, uh, the, the situation is very different uh, between different countries and different um, teachers as well. Uh, at the same time, we have also noticed that teachers are a little bit overwhelmed or were at first uh, because they have a, a very big um, workload and it has been difficult for them to separate working time and leisure time. Um, and estimating also the students' workload has been a big challenge for them. But uh, we have recognized that there is two, two different uh, main ways of delivering teaching during, during this COVID-19 crisis. And one is the so-called asynchronous model, where you are giving some, some tasks for students to do online, uh, which then they they will submit um, back into the learning management system and the teachers will give feedback uh, maybe by written format or by calling to the students. Uh, and of course the synchronous model is then um, where you are holding the usual online lectures at normal schedules, but this can be quite 
heavy sometimes because if there is let's say eight hours of online lessons then that that is quite heavy on on uh, both the teachers and the students um, in higher education institutes like our own university Moodle is very um, highly used as a learning management platform but also Microsoft Teams uh, there has been some some uh, Zoom or Google Hangout or Adobe Connect virtual class classrooms in use and uh, but also in this situation we can recognize that there has been some positive advances uh, like the fact that the teachers have started to get this kind of um, positive feelings of digitalization success because they actually had to take the step that they were fearing for many many years and they have they have started to get this we can do this feeling um, when they have been also helping their peers to to deliver teaching at these times um, there, there has been some new um, processes developing on on technological and pedagogical support that can be also used after the crisis ends uh, just one example of how how to deliver exams online this has been of course a major problem um, so at least these four types of uh, ways of delivering exams we have recognized one is to, to hold a kind of time controlled Moodle exam where uh, the students can use notes but they won't have time uh, to answer all the questions unless they have studied for the exam before. Then another option is to have a kind of Zoom supervised essay writing. Um, there has been also oral exams via video, video conferencing and, and we have also given the possibility to do the master's degrees maturity tests by transforming it into a writing public press release instead. Yeah, and so there are a few challenges for teaching in higher education at this time. Uh, for example, one is that even though self-direction is required from higher education students, it is evident that some students can struggle with independent online study. But for example, in you, the university has arranged some Zoom meetings as an option for students to work together while they work independently and socialize during breaks, so as to provide a structure for the day. And another observation is that some faculties and teachers are better equipped for distance education than others. So there's a possibility to learn from other teachers and learn how to use different technologies because they, of course, different technologies require different technological skills, but also different pedagogical skills from the teachers. And also, at the university level, there is a need to revise policies regarding distance education and the learning technologies used. So, for example, it is important to ensure that, ensure that the information is secure for students and teachers. And finally, here are some other interesting points to consider. So, one interesting thing is to see which tools will stick. So, right now, many Software is provided for free to students and teachers, but there might be a dramatic loss of users once the crisis is over and the normal crisis is hit. So it will be interesting to see what are the key qualities of edtech tools that will be used besides the price. And also what kind of permanent changes will there be in how education is organized? So are the teachers learning to teach during a crisis or are they learning a new way of teaching for the future? And finally, we think that cross-sectoral collaboration and sharing of good practices has the potential to inspire innovative solutions for future education. And here you can see our contact information and links to the Facebook group and also the LEA webinars. Thank you everybody for this.